<laughs> this is this one. This is I don't think that it's okay. Yeah, but it's one in Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I just wanted to say that the, the program is out, that people know that it exists. Existence. Yeah. You make an existence here. I mean, make an existence claim. I'm not making a uniqueness claim, actually. <laughs> <laughs> So shall we start the one? I will just no, I will just run off and then uh, after talking about this, I will run off and bring my guests. Okay, thank you very much and um, welcome to the third and last day of this workshop. Um, just quickly about Friday. Uh, Friday is the official start of the residential program, but as we said several times, I believe um, whoever is around is invited to attend this event as well, or part of it. Um, and we will just have uh, a few talks initially, and the program is already um, on, the, on the web. It is actually on the workshop one still, but Friday. So we will have talks by uh, Niki, Daryl in the morning, longer talks and in the afternoon. Um, 
uh, by Cisis and uh, by Cullen and John Murphy. And then um, uh, from uh, half three onwards, we would like to start uh, uh, planning the residential program. We will actually be here again. So this will be the venue. And um, yeah, so with every suggestion that you have uh, for, the, for what we want to do during the program, what you want to see during the program, um, yeah, just come along and uh, join the session. And of course, I know that some people will participate in the program who can't be there. And uh, we will take those people suggest, like for instance, Stefan. So we will take your suggestions forward and uh, make sure that they are kind of folded into the planning. Okay, thank you very much. And I hand over to Benedetta who will chair this session. So the first talk of today is by Michael Cheru. 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 Okay. And the title is Separating Nonlinearity and Noise in Data Driven Turbulent Progress. Please. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, so, uh, thank you for the organizers for this, like, very, so far, like, very uh, inspiring uh, workshop. And I hope I won't uh, disappoint you. Uh, in the flow of the, the good uh, talks that we saw. So, okay, this is like a, a joint work that over the recent years I conducted with uh, Hongu Liu and uh, James Mike Williams at uh, UCLA and Hongu at uh, Virginia Tech. But of course, they are like uh, the usual suspect also who uh, I have worked with on similar problem who you know, nurtured a lot of ideas that you will see throughout the talk. And also, like I will I'll take this opportunity also here to, to thank many of you that are in the room in this distinguished audience, also like inspired uh, us in conducting this work. So uh, here is a, a just like to position the problem we are talking about. This is the classical paper of uh, Hasselmann where uh, uh, I highlighted two sentences here. In the usual statistical dynamical system, only the average transport effect of the rapidly buying weather component are parameterizing the climate system. And the essential feature of stochastic climate model is that the non-average weather component are also retained. So the idea was like, he wanted to derive an average system that will de describe the average motion that will, as we will see, filter out the fast motion and then restore the fast motion out of a stochastic parametrization. So that was like the original idea. And of course, like the parametrization that were proposed at that time were mainly linear stochastic linear, like Langevin type equation. So there were like partial success of the program. But if we go a bit more into the mathematical formulation of this problem, actually we can formulate it in a very clear mathematical sense. If you assume that the, 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 you have the slow variable that will be the climate, describing the climate, and y describe, describing the weather, the fast variable, and you assume a time scale separation for the moment, controlled by the epsilon parameter here, then when y is assumed to be chaotic, and involving much faster than the X variable, the question is that can we derive a closed equation of the X equation without to have solving the Y equation? And for that, you know, this is exactly how, what we can rephrase and, and uh, uh, talk, uh, you, you, you talk about it be a bit before. So in two steps, you have the averaging part, which is essentially to average out the contribution of y variable into the x equation. And this is done by you know, averaging uh, against the conditional probability distribution of the fast variable. And then you get like what Asselman was calling a statistical dynamical model, which is nothing else than the average equation. But the averaging here is understood with respect to this probability measure, this conditional probability measure. And then we are interested with the stochastic rectification to bring back the effect on top of this average effect. So actually this idea of averaging, just to make it clear, 
is far to be new. And we can trace it back from the work of Lagrange and Laplace in the 18th and, and 19th century. And later on, you know, we had like for Hamiltonian system, the, the works of Bogdubov, Mikropolsky, and Neustadt, who like obtain estimates of this type, meaning that the average solution can describe the full solution of the, of the, uh, the, the solar system on interval that scale as one over epsilon. So this is like just to draw a parallel here and that the complexity is like, a, a, I mean, the, 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 the solar system is also a complex system in a certain sense. And so we, we just to, to draw this, this parallel. But now, what do we have in the Asselman stochastic program? We have several difficulties. First, when you want to look at the, 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 the you study the error, you would like to have something like that, like a normal uh, central limit theorem, meaning that X, the true variable minus the average, uh, the solution of the average system is scaling towards a uh, normal distribution as the time scale separation increases. Epsilon controls this. Then there are like people who talk about large division. I won't talk about that in this formalism and it's difficult because we don't start with a stochastic system here. We start with a deterministic chaotic system. So large deviation is a big issue here. The problem is like there is a, the troublemaker that is the conditional uh, distribution here, which is typically non-Gaussian and how to estimate to compute due to the large degrees of freedom. And so to give you an idea here, Depicted, you know, here V would be the reduced state space, X would be the trajectory in the reduced state space here. And you see, depending on where I am on the projected trajectory right there, I will have that the, the disintegration, this conditional distribution of the fast variable Y given X can have a shape that change and that is not Gaussian in the course of time. And remember, we want to have a stochastic process that mimic this distribution conditionally where you are in X, right? That's the, 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 the problem. And here, I presented here, it's actually from a true system, it's not a schematic. So we have here an unresolved variable, a resolved variable, and you see clearly here that the conditional, the fact that you, you want uh, 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 a, a, a distribution that is Gaussian in the central limit theorem, it has to be conditioned at least on the X variable, right? And so you see also here that there is an average parameterization that is nonlinear here. And though there is like nonlinear also sitting in the average system as well. So how are we gonna address this problem of like finding the stochastic rectification? So here is the M, M, N incantation. No, this is not Messi, Mbappe, Neymar. No, no, no. This is Markovian, memory, and noise. This is the so called Morrison's one. Saruman, for those who <laughs> not know this guy. So, Christopher Lee, for the internet. So, Morrison's expansion. So here is like we can derive the Morizontic. I just put these slides for the students. I know there are many experts in the room. So here it's like the the the, the Koopman operator phi is an observable. C is a, is a dummy variable in R n, and you have that this denotes the flow of your ODE system, your full ODE system. And then you have you can prove that the evolution of any observable satisfies this equation here, this is a PDE equation. Here you see the operator where the coefficient of the, the, the operator are the component of this vector field. And then we can trivially decompose like that, introduce the conditional expectation. And I will uh, skip the, the, the math, but you know, we can have using which is called like in mathematics, it's interesting, we call it Miyadera void formula from the semi-group theory, 
which is the dual of the variation of constant formula. And this is what the physicists call Dyson formula. And guess what? Many bo applied math math uh, books, they don't mention the Mirade Boyd formula, but they say the Dyson formula, but this is the formula that we can prove rigorously. So anyway, so now you have essentially that this is giving us using, so semi-group theory, okay? This is what I'm telling you here. You pick up your Koopman operator and using semi-group theory, you have a decomposition into a Markovian part, a non-Markovian part, and the stuff in the middle, which is your noise part. And <coughs> or not all the terms are necessarily needed and different gradation of prominence between these three ingredients, the Markovian memory and noise term arise in application. Okay. And this is something very important to keep in mind because unfortunately, People make a lot of mistakes when they want to address their more resonant decomposition. For instance, I give you an example right there. If you pick up the, the MZ formalism, it gives like a general roadmap for closure, but a, a too general roadmap. That's why it becomes an incantation. Markovian, this is the average step in assembly pro, pro, program. You want this guy. And this whole business here, the two terms here are the stochastic rectification. And they can contain the memory or they do not contain the memory or they can be only memory and without noise. And this guy does not necessarily needs to be very non-linear. And here is an example. I pick up the famous Lorentz 63. This is like the projection in 2D. You want to have a closure of this guy, guess what? It's a joke because you pick up the Z equation here and you integrate this guy just in Z. Then you do your variation of constant formula this time. And you plug the solution of this guy into the Y equation and you get, you get an integral differential equation that is given like that, that depends only on X and Y and it's depending only on the memory, right? And you see here that the Markovian part, of course, there is a Markovian part, but the Markovian part is only linear. So I don't need to pay a price into a fancy nonlinear conditional expectation. So my average system in the Hasselman language is very really simple. It's just the linear terms that I retain. But the noise part here, actually, it's not really noisy. It's just like a memory term, right? And in all the cases, and this is what we would say in, this short, in, the, in the second part of my talk, reverse situation though exists where there is no need of memory terms, but actually highly nonlinear Markovian terms and noise, smart noise. So here you see the L63 is an example where you need just simple Markovian terms and memory. And I'm going to talk about uh, extreme opposite case in a certain sense. And for that, we're going to go to the L80 model, the Lorentz 90 model. Here I've depicted, you know, you see here gravity waves grippling on the cloud deck and gravity waves somewhere in the Mediterranean Sea. Actually, it's near this. Cyprus. So the L80 model compared to the L63 model, it supports gravity waves, which is something that the L63 doesn't have by definition. <laughs> so what is this model? This is a much less known model, but you will see it's a very powerful model. One more from Lawrence. So it's a nine variable system that he obtained in 1980 as a truncation of the primitive equation onto three Fourier modes that he selected in a very delicate way. And by doing the projection and doing some rescaling, you will have that this is a system with nine variables. You see I, J, K, 
run in this set. So you have like a permutation. And the x, y, z variable are respectively the amplitudes for the divergent velocity potential, the stream function, the dynamic height, respectively. And Peter Gent and uh, Jim McWilliams, they like analyze all sorts of transition of to chaos in this model. And when we did the rescaling here as epsilon is increased, we see fast oscillations spontaneously emerging in this model. And the goal of the game that we're gonna try to solve here is to find the closed system for the Y equation here that you see only on the stream function where you need to parameterize the X variable, but the X is talking with the Z. So you will have to, to find the parameterization of Y, uh, of X in terms of Y and Z in terms of Y. Okay. So first of all, small epsilon. I have to say that epsilon here represents the host binom number. So for small host binom number, actually it's Lorentz himself and Chuck Leaf also, they derive a QG approximation. You can have like a perfect, like these are like some example where you see that the, the system behave as the Lorentz 63. And guess what? Actually, you have like a change of variables so that the lower, the, 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 the reduced equation here that they derive is equivalent to the Lorentz 63. So it's not surprising. So this is the, what we call the quasi geostrophic regime. And then, you know, when such results were obtained, there were all sorts of like excitement and Lorentz was leading the show about the existence of slow manifold, like a quasi geostrophic manifold, which is related actually to the famous initialization problem of, that Richardson posed first, you know, to filter out the gravity waves. So do we have an existence of an initial money, a slow manifold or don't? Yes, there is, maybe. And actually this hesitation came from the fact that, you know, in this paper with Lorentz and Krishnamurti, they said we then show that in traveling along one of these orbits eventually encounters gravity waves. Whereupon it follows that the slow manifold does not exist. But what they didn't know apparently is the formal definition of a slow manifold as coined by Finichel in the, the, the 1979, where actually a slow manifold is a manifold that is not necessarily invariant, but you are exponentially attracted to it up to a small error on which you have a control controlled by the time scale separation. And so the two could be reconciled. And this is a picture that actually show a spontaneous generation of gravity waves. So you have like here a, 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 a solution this is the slow manifold situation. This is the QG regime. But then you move away from the QG regime and you have like that you can produce these like oscillation, fast oscillation that are around the manifold. And this is what you obtain here. Like you see, when you change the epsilon, you can see some the emergence of this spontaneous fast oscillation in this model that correspond to the inertial gravity wave. But there is, and this is what we did in this paper in 2017, we observed that there is for large epsilon, even further, if you push epsilon further, you have the total variation of the solution that explodes. Meaning that your emergence of fast oscillation are no longer like, you know, contained around the manifold, but actually become very energetic. This is what we see here. You see that the total version of all the variables here, you have the nine variables that, you know, at some critical value epsilon star, they jump literally, which means this. This is a regime for large epsilon. And this is what we have here, a super, super critical mixed oscillation regime. Where here I have the X that I want to parameterize, the Z that I want to parameterize and the Y that I want to close, okay? And you see what, what? You see a mixture of high and slow frequencies into the supposedly slow variable. The variable is supposed to encode the Rossby wave. So the Rossby waves are also contaminated with the 
gravity waves here. And this is like a kind of a Hofmuller diagram for the string function in VGA, just to be a bit more vintage. So, and you see here that there is like this mixture of frequencies. And you want to close that. So it's a nightmare for closure because there is no time scale separation and there is a substantial exchange of energy between the slow and the fast. <coughs> so we can derive actually using a balance equation, which was actually an idea of Lorentz himself already in 1960 and also of Jules Charney later on, we can derive a balance equation, which are like, consist of like deriving a differential algebraic equation out of this nine dimensional system. And you get a parametrization here that is, that is highly nonlinear. And here I depict, because remember like I parametrize X, which is three dimensional, Z that is three dimensional in terms of a variable Y that is three dimensional. So to, imagine, to visualize this manifold, I need to do something. And here, you know, we like just like pick up the sphere, right, in 3D. And then you can like visualize the variables as parametrized by the component of the phi, the nonlinearity, the, 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 the BE parametrization that maps the Y onto the X. And you see that it's highly nonlinear. So this is the BE closure when you have this nonlinear this nonlinear parametrization that you plug into here. But you see, it's like capturing only part of the solution. And what is the part of the solution is capturing? It's capturing the low frequency variability. And when you represent the manifold using the noise operation, I don't have time to explain here. You see that black is the true solution. You see that actually the X2, the fast variable you want to parameterize most of the time sit on the manifold, but it's going also uh, across the manifold. And actually it's, it's even like nearly orthogonal to that manifold. And this nearly orthogonal feature makes the whole game for us to find the rectification. So the B manifold is giving me the, the Markovian term. Now I want to find the off, the off manifold behavior. So I don't have time to explain this in detail, but if you form the residual, you have like, you pick up, you have six variable, the six variable, you couple them two by two, and you have, you form these like pairs of like um, uh, time series. And when you analyze these guys, you think the, the red pole court resonances, we observe the parabola here. And the parabola, as we have made like a paper with like Hank uh, and Alexi Tante and uh, David Nelin, we explain right, cited right there here. We know that these guys will be like appropriately parameterized by stochastic oscillators. And this is what we do. We find the diffusion from this real polycord spectrum. And we found like a network of like stochastic oscillators that will be of this form with a noise and the coupling terms to parameterize the residual. And when we do that, we obtain formally a closure of this type. And what is amazing is that we have, you see, this is the true in black, the, 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 the closure in red for each of the three variables. And we capture this mixture of slow and fast variables. Whereas like in terms of attractor, it's like that. And you see, if I have only the BE for this regime, I capture only a periodic solution. So the stochastic rectification do, does a fantastic job, just like I finished with the, this slide. So the BE has a loop closure and this nonlinear separation of variables here. So actually, when we look at the closure, which is written here, now you have a stochastic rectification coming from this eta term, which are solution of these uh, Stuart Lambda oscillators network. And so you see that you come up with stochastic advection terms that are essential because they go through the quadratic terms in here that are essential to, to get the closure. And just a word to conclude on the neural network parametrization. If you want to do that, if you want to address, you said, okay, let's trash all of that. 
and let's attack the parametration of the neural network that you will have a closure that will have the neural network embedded in here and no noise because of the the high frequency bar the high frequency part of the solution is actually a serious impediment for your math machine to learn the manifold and the, the stochastic rectification and it's suffering here you see it's like a bigger like neural network here where i get like you know somehow a shape that is not so stupid and in terms of power spectral density is missing all the juice of the variability the fast gravity waves peak and the and the, and the Rossby wave peaks. So the perspective of this program is extendable to primitive equation for which the VE has been originally designed. The question is about the stochastic rectification, short land rectification, it's and, and it's one-way coupling needs to be addressed for that problem. And I don't have time to talk about like what to do for other fluid problems, but for sure, with the noise, you know, we can make maybe our modeling spherical cow world looking like more like a cow. Thank you. Questions? Yes. Yes. First, I have a better slide for the spherical cow. I am I am I, I am happy to yeah. to, to yeah, have this yeah. slide. No, about the about instead of the param so correct me if I'm wrong. So basically, what you're trying to follow your line of argument. So you, you show that the properties, the spectral properties of what is left, looks like what you derived in the in the previous paper. Yes. Uh, yes, they look like the the, the oscillator. So basically, you want to construct a sort of a universal, in some sense, model of noise using these guys as generator of noise, then you put these guys and you couple them. And in this way, you dress the system and that's how you achieve the noise and the rectification. But for that, you need to have the right nonlinear parametrization, which is given here by the balance equation. Yes. So, uh, so because if you don't have the right term, which is a conditional expectation term, yes. correct? Then you will contaminate your residual with many frequencies and it will become more difficult for you yeah, 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 sure. So you basically accept. You, yes. So in some sense, what you achieve is the separation exactly. of the dynamics without assuming a separation of scale. Exactly. We agree? Exactly, right. Valerio. Okay, because so you see, is, uh, here this is three-dimensional. It's a very good point. It's three-dimensional. That's a very good result. Then, Nick. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And, and, and these guys are like the, the eta terms. Yeah. They are one way coupled. You integrate these guys. And you have you plug into here. So in other words, I have a separate model for the gravity waves. Yes, listen, that's exactly what you have. And you don't need to solve the couple model. So this guy is the 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 the, the end result. Okay. Yeah. But I have a separate model of the gravity waves. So like you know, yes. I could I could like generate many uh, realization. Like now we have to work with Lorenzo. You have uh, you have convinced me. Thank you. <laughs> Forget about Lorenz ninety six. Nah, really it's so ninety six. <laughs> <laughs> You have to be more vintage. That's why I put the VGA colors, you know, for those who didn't get it. This is in VGA. <laughs> that's like back, back in the 80s. Amiga, that's kind yes, of like Amiga, Amiga, you know. Those afternoons. Yeah. So, so very nice point. Um, and I, I'm one more TV guy. So I, I, would, I really investigate what happened uh, when the dynamics is far away from QG uh, dynamics. Which is the case here. And, and um, so when it's close to QG, the faster one, and people believe is enslaved to the slow manifold. Yeah. And um, it has very small feedback into the slow manifold. And plus the fast one, uh, by dropping the nonlinear self interaction in the fast part, it's kind of linear in, on its own. Yeah. So therefore, people consider it enslaved to the to the slow manifold. But when you are far away from the from the um, geostrophic balance, um, not only the the coupling become two way coupling, but the fast part also has a self interaction. So fast the gravity waves. Yes. To now in our uh, yes. starts to uh, interact with themselves. So uh, I, I think it, it, um, my, I guess my comment is that um, this 
far off equilibrium or far off stone manifold dynamics. Uh, um, you are starting this from a stochastic point of view, but I, I think from the modeling point of view itself, that how do you extend uh, this um, QG based way of thinking, you know, or model to, to, a, to a full. So this is the thing here. Look, the, the, the balance equation is giving you your QG approximation for small Rosbin one uh, 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 wave, uh, small Robin numbers. And when you go in a far away regime, the, Q, the, the, the QG approximation or the BE approximation, because the BE is actually more advanced than the QG, but it gives you still the low frequency variability part of your solution. And then you need to have the rectification. And I have to stress that, you know, this is like first like illustrated on the LAT, that the balance equation you can ask geophysicists here, it's something very well known in, 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 in geophysics. The balance equation were actually derived for shallow water equation, for like a primitive equation. So we do have the balance equation at the PDE level, but yet the problem is that it's capturing like only the slow component of the solution. And there is still the problem of parameterizing the fast inertial gravity waves. And this is the first solution that we propose here on the truncated model from Lorentz of the primitive equation. So the program will be exactly to extend it in the, in the, in the PDE level. So that's of course next. Yeah. Great. Um, now, uh, when you said one way interaction, well, that's a skew product. It is, it is. Uh, but uh, my real question is, can you accommodate, you can think of what you're talking as being what physicists call intrinsic noise of the system. But we still may have also extrinsic noise. So can you still oh. do something with that? Well, or does it screw up completely? Very good question, Michael. So if actually your original model has a, a, a noise, right? Also containing it. So actually this is all the things I have been working on. You will get other terms that will contain, uh, depending on the noise, the way the noise into the equation, that will contain exogeneous memory effect. Not endogeneous, yeah, yeah, yeah. but exogeneous memory effect. Okay, sure. And so, uh, uh, but of course, like it becomes more involved technically, but it's doable. Okay. Yes, but it's a very good remark. Thank you, Michael. So we thank the speaker again.